This weather is crazy. I, it's it's April 27th in Texas, and it's cold this morning. Um, I'm loving it though. I got a fire going. It's probably the last fire I'm going to be able to have this year in the studio. Um, Echo was loving it too. She was curled up by the fire a moment ago. I think she's moved off now. Um, I've been painting all morning. I'm getting ready for the Haley Hinman show, and the goal is to have 10 to 20 brand new paintings for the show. And right now I have about six in the works. And I just want to take a little bit of time and show and show you these paintings um, so you can see where my head's at. And if you have any ideas or comments, I would love to hear it. I really would. Um, please bear in mind, these paintings that you're going to see, they are not finished. They're works in progress. And they're in different levels, different stages of completedness. Um, some of them are merely an underpainting, while others are almost done. So pretty much every level here. And... Um, they deal mostly with music and flavor, but it's probably easier if I just show you the paintings than sit here and, and talk about them. So let's do that. Okay, I said I'd show a couple of paintings that were in the very beginning stages, and um, here we go. Here's two of them. Um, I'm showing them at the same time because they're both at the, about the same level of completedness. This one is a woman holding a cigar, and the colors from the painting are going to come from the flavors of the cigar. But like I say, this is this is just the, in the initial stages. Um, it's the underpainting. It's it's what the light is going to come through and hit um, at the very end, the bottom of the painting, and then before it's reflected out. So I'll have a lot of paint over this. This other painting um, is it's another music painting. the The character is Prospero. And it's done more in the in the style of of like Titian. It's different, of course, because I use a raised line drawing, um, and then and then I start working the paint up from that. Um, but in the, in the way that Titian would 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 work out like like base tones and then and then add the color. That's that's the way I'm going here. By the end of the painting, it's going to be very very brightly colored. This is another painting that is pretty much just an underpainting at this point. Um, it's a music painting and it's inspired by Billy Joel's New York State of Mind. By the time that the painting is done, every note of the song and the time that it's played is going to be in this painting. Um, right now though, it, it is just in the very initial stages. One thing I really liked about this song was just the interplay between the saxophone player and the piano. And the um, at the time of the of the, the, the painting, it's, it's a very specific time in the song, it's, it's about 11 seconds before the sax solo. Um, and you probably can't tell with the camera, but this painting at this point is extremely textured. Um, there's points in the painting where, it, where it's, it's all the way down to the wooden panel and other, other times where it just has this extreme texture, maybe up to a, qu a quarter of an inch. And, um, by the time that I get done with the painting though, I think I'm going to, I'm going to add the layers and the paint so that it's almost as smooth as glass and the reason for that is because I, I, I love texture but it tends to catch the light and and bounce it out in weird ways so you get glares and, and weird reflections where if it's smooth it'll let the light come in it'll go through all the layers in a straight line and then reflect out and it'll just make really bright colors so I haven't decided but I'm kinda leaning towards having the the, the light just come in at straight angles so. um, but who knows we'll have to see what happens like I say, if you have any ideas, any comments, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to talk about art. This painting here is almost finished. It's a music painting, and it was inspired by Howlin' Wolf's Smokestack Lightning. And if you were to glance at this painting, you might think that the colors are arbitrary. But actually, nothing could be further from the truth. Whenever I hear music, I see color. And it's very consistent. And that means that if you see a particular color in one music painting and then see the same color in a different painting, you're looking at the same sound. And this lets you do some things with the music that's almost impossible when you're just listening to it instead of visualizing it. You know, timing is everything to music, but when we experience the music visually, then we control the time. And you get an almost fourth dimensional feel to it. You can look at the beginning of a song and the end of a song at the same time, or the whole song at once or linger on a particular note for as long as you want. You can do pretty much whatever you want. I listen to music constantly, but I was surprised how little I actually understood what I was hearing until I started experiencing music in this way, after I started 
doing these music paintings. And I've always heard that the blues was the father of rock and roll, but I didn't really appreciate how much this was true until I was working on a blues painting like this one and comparing it to a rock painting. You, know, you can actually see the blues in the rock. One thing I like about this painting is the interplay between the very roughly worked oil paint and the flowing resin. You know, at the time that Smokestack Lightning was first being performed, it was a sound that no one had heard before. It was emerging. You know, and as it did, it broke apart and reshaped these long-held conventions that people had about music. I want to show you a different type of painting that I'm working on right now. You know, the great thing about color is that there's billions of them, and they interact with each other in very complex ways. They complement, contrast, and blend, and that lets you do a lot of different things with them. This painting is actually a fragrance painting, and it's based on the scents found in Chanel Number no. Five. Um, and there's and there's scents like rose, lavender, jasmine, sandalwood, patchouli, and musk oil, and the idea is to find colors that harmonize, they interact with each other in the same way that these different fragrances interact with each other. So I won't go into all the particulars right now, I'll save that for later, but this is the beginning of this painting. This painting is almost completely done. It's a music painting, it's Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, and every note in the song is in this painting in, in the timing that it was played um, and if you compare the notes here let's say like to the to the smokestack lightning painting you can see just how crazy Jimi Hendrix was it's amazing how much things have changed and developed you can still see the blues a little bit in this painting but the the the, the transformation though that um, the Hendrix put the music through is is really amazing to me the guitar in the painting is based off a 1967 Fender Stratocaster. I was going to make it um, the exact right proportions of, of a Stratocaster, but instead of having the painting fit the guitar, I decided just to make the guitar fit the painting. I'm working on some other paintings here in the studio. Uh, I'll get to those later. I'm getting ready to go to Shreveport to, to do a painting workshop. The last time we went, we did a workshop with about 1,500 children. So. I'm really curious to see what it's going to be like this time. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for looking at what I've been working on. I really appreciate that. Talk to you soon.